Starting note, if you don't know what the terms tropical, sidereal, and anomalistic mean in an astronomic context, you should watch my video, What is a Lunar Month, actually, first? Link is in the description. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpius, Sagittarius, Capricornus, Aquarius, Pisces. These are the 12 astrological signs. Actually, that's a lie. These are the names of constellations. The actual names of the astrological signs in English use Scorpio instead of Scorpius and Capricorn instead of Capricornus because of course they just had to. The astrological idea behind the zodiac is that the constellations the sun, the moon, and the other planets are in provide information about what types of events will occur on Earth, and from which many different people interpret which choices in life they should make. Though in modern American usage, the focus is pretty much all on the sun, and all the other bodies get ignored. Now, let's be clear. Astrology is pseudoscientific nonsense. But if you choose to just humor astrologists for a while and decide to check the stars for yourself, you'll find out the signs reported in horoscopes and the constellations on the sky don't actually line up. And if the constellation the sun is in is supposed to determine aspects of your personality, that sure seems to be something important to get correct, right? So why don't they line up? Welcome to 2 Lambda Plus Black, I am Heirua. Okay, so uh, chances are the dates that you've seen assigned to the signs are this set of dates. And on the majority of these dates, the sun is not actually in the associated constellation. Now why is that? Well, these dates are dates on the conventional Western calendar, the Gregorian calendar. Uh, this calendar follows the tropical year, the year defined in terms of Earth's seasons. But the year that's synchronized with the constellation's positions is the sidereal year. Remember, constellations consist of stars. And if you've seen my video on lunar months, you know these two aren't exactly the same in length for the Earth. Actuality is, the Sun was in these constellations during these respective dates at the time of the ancient Greeks. But since then, the Earth has precessed for over 2,000 years along its 26,000 year cycle, enough for the tiny difference between a tropical year and a sidereal year to be a real deal. In fact, you may have heard of two latitudes known as the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, whose names straight up rest on the false assumption of equivalence between the tropical and sidereal years. In ancient Greek times, the Sun indeed met the Tropic of Cancer in Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn in Capricornus. But now the zodiacal constellations have taken their slow and steady processional ride along the ecliptic for long enough that the Sun now meets the Tropic of Cancer in Taurus and the Tropic of Capricorn in Sagittarius. And if you don't think the Sun revolves around the Earth, you're probably not in ancient Greek. Wait, are you Aristarchus? and you're still sentient somehow, please write me an email, I'd love to interview you. For those of you unaware, Aristarchus was an ancient Greek astronomer who said he thought that actually the Earth orbited the Sun. An idea that almost nobody took seriously, though Archimedes at least listened to him and noted Aristarchus' thoughts in his writings, allowing us to be aware of them. Anyway... If you applied the correction for the millennia of earthly precession that have occurred, you'd end up with these dates, the dates when the sun is actually in these constellations in modern times. Actually, that's a lie. Different zodiacal constellations actually take up different spans of the ecliptic, but conventional astrology decides to even it out so that each constellation gets assigned the same amount of time, cutting from the larger constellations and reassigning to adjacent smaller constellations. Actually, even that's a lie. Conventional astrology actually assigns to each sign an equal amount of space in the sky, which is not the same as an equal amount of time, because Earth's orbit around the Sun is not a perfect circle, and according to Kepler's second law, orbiting objects move faster when they're closer to the objects they orbit. So, signs near perihelion get slightly less time than signs near aphelion, which signs these are, of course, themselves change over time because Earth's anomalistic period is equal to neither its tropical period nor its sidereal period. Currently, the Sun is in Sagittarius during perihelion and in Gemini during aphelion, 
allotting Sagittarius the least time and Gemini the most time in the equal space system. If you wanted astrological signs to reflect the constellation the Sun is really in, you'd have to instead use these dates, which showcase how different the ecliptic spans of the constellations are. Virgo occupies the greatest span of the ecliptic at 45 days, and Scorpius occupies the smallest span at merely 7 days. And at this point, you might have noticed that Scorpius ends on November 29th and the next sign, Sagittarius, begins on December 18th. There are 13 constellations along the ecliptic. Yes, that's right. When the conventional western zodiac was standardized, Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer, was arbitrarily thrown out because people liked the number 12 better. How would you divide 13 constellations evenly among earth, air, fire, and water after all? Ophiuchus, in fact, actually has an astrological sign assigned to it, and it's even in Unicode. But rarely over the history of astrology did astrologers actually recognize and use Ophiuchus as a sign. More astoundingly, though, the sun actually spends 18 days in Ophiuchus, making it only the second shortest span. Why was Ophiuchus thrown out instead of Scorpius? My guess is that Scorpius made it in just because it's among the brightest constellations in the entire sky. By the way, Every once in a while, some journalistic outlet picks up on some astronomer or astronomical institution pointing out that the zodiac has shifted and makes a news article about it as if it's a new thing, rather than the signs changing all the time, very slowly. Try searching something like, uh, new signs zodiac in your favorite search engine and enjoy the amusing results. When I googled new signs zodiac, the first result was an Australian news agency, 7 News, claiming that NASA just discovered a new constellation, implied by the next sentences to be Ophiuchus. Did you know Ptolemy worked for NASA? I didn't either! This is the plot twist of the millennium. Actually, a millennium is insufficiently long to describe the span of time involved. This is the plot twist of this interglacial period. Anyway, there you have it. The actual astrological signs for the present time so you can do your astrology correctly. Whatever that means. Thanks to my patrons for funding my work. You can join them over at patreon.com slash Heirua. There is a link in the description. And as always, remember to love the night.